Hey everyone on YouTube, my name's Austin and today we're going to start a, um, a guide per se, a series of videos on how to stick weld, uh, shield metal arc welding, I believe is the technical term. Um, there's a lot of videos on this online, but I'm going to put together a playlist that's a guide, you know, that you can follow along go right there to it and click on it and it will show you exactly what you need to do in your home garage or wherever you can to start teaching yourself how to stick weld. So uh, they're probably going to be about 20 minute videos more or less, um, but that's the goal. 20 minutes, I think that's pretty good. So today's video we're going to talk equipment and uh, PPE or personal protection equipment. So let's start with personal protection equipment. Stick welding, any welding of any sign, kind, there is a lot of sparks. So you're going to want a good pair of gloves. These, if you have them, will work. You'd be better off having a welding glove like this. Something with a longer sleeve that's going to slip up over your hand. I use these because I don't keep my hand really close to the arc. Um, but when you're just learning, the best thing to start out with, and I got one right here. is a welding glove like this. These are a lot thicker, there's extra padding. The only trouble with them is they're not really, um, you don't have as much flexibility as you have. This is a stick glove versus like this is a TIG glove, but you know, I can move my hands all around. But any glove like this, should be some sort of leather or hide is better than no glove at all or no sleeves. Cotton sleeves work good. Um, let's see, if you wanna get real fancy, you can pick up a pair of these gloves. I don't know exactly what this material is. Let's see if I can find a tag here. Um, these are cotton. These are cotton, they just slide up over your arm. But if you got a cotton sweater that you don't mind burning some holes into, go for it. So that covers sleeves and gloves. The next thing, um, as a welder, you always want to protect your eyes. And stick welding, you're chipping slag and doing all kind of that thing and don't think stuff can't come in your helmet and hit you in the eye. It's definitely happened before. So a good pair of safety glasses. Uh, the other thing, is a pair of earplugs. A pair of earplugs will work, something you can put in and put your hood over your head and they will stay in your ear. Um, the reason is when you're stick welding, your machine's kind of loud and then when you're going to chip off your slag or whatever, you're hitting metal or if you ever use a grinder or anything, it's just good things to have. So they're, it's, it's always good if you get into the habit when you're starting to protect your eyes, protect your skin and protect your ears because if you're going to make a career out of this, well, you want to be able to keep those things good for the long haul. You don't want to be the 50-year-old uh, welder who everybody hates in the shop because when all the machines are going, he's deaf and you can't hear what he's saying. Or, excuse me, excuse me. He can't hear what you're saying and it just slows everything down. Onto that, protecting your eyes, you will need a welding hood. This is an uh, Lincoln Electric Auto Darkening Hood. It does have a grind mode. If you end up using your hood on grind mode to grind, always try to remember to turn it back to weld mode. And it has, this one has four different, five different, excuse me. It has a nine through 13 setting on the shade darkness on the hood. I usually keep mine at 13. Um, I think nine's too light, especially for stick welding. Um, but I know some people who like the nine for like plasma cutting and stuff like that because your goggles are generally a shade uh, five, I believe, but I, some people I know who don't like that. So that pretty much covers it. If you're gonna be in the shop, you should be wearing um, closed toed shoes at least. Better to have leather or steel toe boots, a uh, cowboy boot with a composite toe, something like that, to where if you drop a piece of steel on your toe, you're not breaking a toe. Um, so that pretty much covers it for PPE. 
Except one last thing. The air in your welding. The welding fumes... The fumes welding lets off are toxic that can cause you harm to your body. So you want to make sure you are in a well-vented area, either in your garage, with a bay door open, or have a fan blowing on you, because we can do that with shield metal arc welding, or at least a door or a window cracked. And you don't want to have your face right, right in what you're doing. I know it's something easy to fall into because you want to see what you're doing, but you should really learn to keep your head back and learn to watch from a distance on the arc puddle and all that. So that pretty much, at least off the top of my head, covers on what you should have PPE-wise. Um, the next thing is what kind of equipment do you need to get into stick welding, especially to teach for yourself? Um, we've all seen the guys who do how-to videos who have like an enormous, beautiful-looking shop. Um, you don't need it. It'd be great to have. We all want that someday. Some of us aren't there yet. I am not. Um, but you can definitely learn with just a few simple tools. So, some of the hand tools you need. You're going to need a chipping hammer. This is for after you weld, there's a thing called flux on the electrode that goes into the puddle, creates a shielding barrier, and turns into slag. You will need this to chip that slag off. Um, some people call it hammer, chip and hammer, uh, slag hammer, I've heard it called. I call it chipping hammer, so for the intention of this purpose, this is a chipping hammer. Uh, some people like a wire brush. I do. This one's actually really crummy up and dirty, so we're not going to use this one. We'll see if we can find another one. Um, welding brushes are really interesting. Uh, but it's really just to clean like the toes of the weld and you probably don't know what a toe is. I'll show you later on in the series, but these two tools are generally what is used to keep the weld mint or the piece you're working on clean so that if you're doing multiple passes, you can weld, chip it all off, clean it all up, and then run another bead and repeat the process. The next thing uh, I always like to have, it's kind of an extra thing, but uh, they, don't, they don't necessarily teach this like in the school program I went to, but have a good file on hand. This is just like a job smart file though that I got from Tractor Supply. I'm sure um, Amazon will have it. And what this is for, and I'll show you right here maybe. So this is a Old 7018 electrode, we're not going to use it, but just for the purpose of this video, as you can see, the end's kind of gummed up. When you go to restrike your arc, you're going to have to scratch that until it is clean, and you could risk getting arc strikes outside of where you're going to weld. But we have a file. We can clean that up and that will be a lot easier to strike an arc with, excuse me, re-strike an arc with because it's that bright shiny metal. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but with that bright shiny metal, you'll be able to brush it along and or tap it if you're into that, but I, I like to brush it. And uh, it will easier make arc striking. Ooh. The reason you want to watch out for arc striking, I'm going to tell you now and I'll tell you later on in the videos as they come. If you get an arc strike, and for those of you who don't know what that is, you will see it down the line. In the weld puddle, back up, excuse me. If you get an arc strike outside of where your weld puddle is going to cover, what happens is for a split second, the arc is actually connecting, hardening that surface. And over time, that surface is subject to crack, and then it can cause a failure in the weld or the weldment, the piece of the piece what you're working on. So if it does happen, um, I believe it's an instant fail on, I'm going to say 99% of the weld tests out there. There might be a few weld tests. Someone lets you slide on it. I don't know. I don't think so because it's, uh, it's kind of one of those easy things to take the precautions to not get so they kind of have zero tolerance for it 
but it happens. I've seen it. I've done it. If you get it in the welding field, the best thing to do is take a file or sandpaper or a grinding disc or a flap wheel and just go over that area, cleaning it all off. That way it won't be subject to crack. That pretty much goes over hand tools. Now, what are you going to weld on? If you can find a scrap piece of material, that is great. Um, especially for in the start when you get going uh, and you're just padding beads, running beads, practicing your arc strikes, arc strikes that is great. Um, however, eventually, if you can, you want to upgrade to coupons. What I mean by coupons are these right here. This is just a two inch by a quarter inch stock. I buy it in a 20 foot length from my steel supplier and I just cut it down into six inch sections. With this, we can make our welding joints. Okay. And practice our welding. Now I'm gonna just start you out on a little trick. He's got some burrs. You got your file. I'm just deburr these real quick so I don't cut my hands up. Now, um, I've seen it a lot in welding schools and helping people learn to weld where they'll take two pieces of coupon when they're just starting out how to weld, make, let's just say a T-joint, run the bead, looks like garbage, and they scrap this metal. Um, it's one thing if you're not paying for the metal, but since this is kind of a DUI welding school, yeah, you want to get everything you can out of it that you can. So for the intentions of this purpose, to start anyways, you're just going to need three coupons. And this is still a coupon, but it is a four, four inch by quarter inch by six inch piece. We're going to pad some beads on a little bit later, probably in the next video. The next video will probably be striking an arc. We'll probably talk a little bit about picking electrodes, different types of electrodes, what the numbers on electrode means, and then striking arcs. And I might make part two to the next video just touching on 7018. So we'll stay tuned for that. Today we're just going over equipment. Um, so... This, we're going to learn how to pad beads on. This will pretty much be a one-time thing you need this for. I don't think anywhere in this series will need a 4-inch. And this can pretty much be any kind of scrap material that you can come by. Coupons, however, though, you will want. And we'll cut more of them as it goes on. But we're going to make sure we're confident that we can run beads in different positions before we start going over joints and wasting a lot of material. Um, so, from that, um, I'm not planning on putting these in a description. I don't know of any stores or anything like that. I'm sure they're out there where you can get coupons, welding coupons for practice at home. Again, I'm sure they're out there. If it turns out that some people cannot, um, get them. I will somehow make these available to you because I want you to have everything you can in order to learn how to weld. And last but surely not least, you're going to need a welder. So for this whole process, I'm going to be using my Lincoln Electric Square Wave TIG 200. You, I don't know how well you can see it with the lighting and everything. Now I know what you're thinking, you're going to use a TIG welder. For stick welding, yes, you totally can. They run off the same polarity, which is the points on the welder that the current either comes out or goes back in, also known as the positive and negative. So yeah, we are gonna be using a stick welder, or excuse me, a TIG welder to learn how to stick weld. You're also gonna need welding rod. These are available at any tractor supply. I don't know what got over this one, it is dirty. Let's, uh, there, this one's clean. Um, this is 7018. I started on 7014. I'll probably be using a lot of 7018 in this video just because I have a lot of it. It is one of my most popular rods. Um, so, but I do have some 7018 over there. Um, if you go to the store and pick some of these out, I would probably start with a 332nd rod. It will say it on the box. What that means is it is the diameter 
of the metal that's inside the flux. 3 30 seconds. Um, the reason you want to do that is you're going to get really good control uh, with your rod and it's really going to be good when you're learning how to do your steps and patterns and all that. So I recommend starting out with a 3 30 second. Uh, if you have the money and you want to, get a couple different styles of rod. They make all sorts of rod. Um, 70 series, 60 series, they make 80 series, they make rod for aluminum, don't get that. They get rod for cast iron. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. But if you're going to run to town to get all your supplies, I'd recommend getting some 7014. Not 7018, I would recommend getting some 7014. If you get 7018, it's not the end of the world. The other thing you might need is a angle grinder. This is a four and a half inch. Um, you won't, I'm not gonna say you absolutely need it to follow this series, but if you plan on getting some uh, two inch or inch and a half by quarter square, or not square stock, flat stock, you will need it to cut it. Um, they're a pretty popular tool. Odds are someone in your family has them, and if you're gonna use it, if they trust you with it, you might be able to borrow it from them. With this though, again, pair of gloves, earplugs, safety glasses, and steel toes are a must. Um, I can't tell you how many guys I've seen cut their wrists, fingers, whatever, with one of these. It's not pretty. Use, use caution. The next thing, if you get an angle grinder, we're gonna spend a second, we're just gonna talk about discs and other things. They're a very versatile food tool. Ugh. This is a four and a half inch cutoff wheel. Four and a half is the diameter or the size. I don't, yeah. For that grinder, this goes on, clamps it, and this is what you're gonna use to cut through metal. I'm gonna show you a few other ones. Say you got a weld to grind out or something. This one looks like it was used on aluminum or something. Um, yeah, that's aluminum without any beeswax. Uh, this goes right on and grind down welds if you have a lot to take down. If you just have a little bit, grinding stone, the name of that one. If you just have a little bit, you can get online, go to Benchmark, Benchmark's Abrasive, that is where I get these. And these, way cheaper than getting at the box, big box stores, I have a video on that. Um, these are jumbo four and a half inch flap discs. Basically what it is, it's a bunch of little things of sandpaper, glued, I'm assuming glued, onto a disc, and that kind of helps take it down. You can get it in 40, 60, 80, and I think even 120 grit. Same thing, it's to remove metal, but it kind of gives it a better polish. Lastly, well not lastly, they make tons of them for these, but these are just the main ones. This <clears throat> is a wire wheel, same thing with all of these. Wear eye protection, earring protection, steel toed boots, gloves, long sleeves. But what you want to do with this is with this, if you got it, you can replace these two tools with this and just clean up the weld with this. Now, in my personal opinion, if you're just starting out, Learn to use these because you're going to learn to watch for different spots and you're going to see as you progress, um, you know, you might lay a weld in and you're going to have to sit here and chip at it for a while. Might have meant something was too cold. But you're going to watch things change using these tools, whereas this, the second it hits, it's just going to be gone. So I recommend starting with these. Lastly, you are going to need a table. Um, a table for me, if I'm just learning, let me back this camera up just a little bit. A table, especially if you're just learning, um, if you can, a metal table. The one I'm using, Harbor Freight actually holds in stock, and I think this will be the actual first time I'm going to use it through this series. I've actually used this table too well done. I bought it and Really all we did was paint stuff on it. I'm gonna use it. It is a little light, so 
If you go to a steel yard or maybe you have a friend that's a welder, they work somewhere, you're going to school, just see if you can get like a quarter inch drop. I got this, it's a quarter inch drop, a cold roll. Um, I just lay it on here, cramp my ground to the workpiece, and then everything's ground. The reason is, um, it's the ABCs of welding, always be comfortable. You don't want to try to start out learning on the ground, you're just going to get frustrated and you're just going to want to give up. Get a table, and that way you can go from there. Um, you can stand, get comfortable. Personally, I think you should start learning in a standing position because we do want to challenge ourselves a little bit. However, if you want to sit down, that's fine. But you just want to make sure you have something you can brace on, do whatever, however you're comfortable until you learn to just stand here, strike that arc, and move. We're going to take our time, we're going to practice, we're going to burn, we're going to learn. That's just the best way to do it when welding. You want to start out comfortable and as you progress, make it more and more challenging for you. Learn how to position welds, overhead, all that kind of stuff. Eventually, I don't know, maybe we'll make some kind of little fixture up here to get overhead. We might have to do that, um, but for right now, we're just going to focus on this, on getting set up, getting the equipment we need, and so on and so forth. Another real quick thing you're going to want, and this is for those of you, this is for those of you who are going to go out and buy stock and cut it down yourselves. You're going to want a clamp. This is an F clamp. I use these quite a lot. If your dad or grandpa or cousin, whoever you got, mother or sister, brother, whoever, maybe even yourself, has a vice on a bench table, that works just as good. Um, but you don't want to go cutting on something for your own personal safety that's not clamped down, especially you're going to have two hands on the grinder, you're going to hit that piece. If it's in clamped, it's just going to fly off and hit you. So always make sure you're securing it when you're trying to cut it. Maybe we'll make a whole how to cut metal with an angle grinder video just so you guys can be safe. But for right now, we're going to at least get some of you guys welding. But that pretty much does it for this video. Like I said, it was just going to be like an intro on stuff you'll need. So, you know, if you're going to follow along over the next week, you can start gathering some of this stuff. Again, if you don't have coupons, that's okay. You are going to be able to learn without it. However, I, I really recommend getting coupons and uh, because there's going to be certain exercises I did when I was learning how to weld that is a really big metal saver. And uh, you'll just, you'll want it, basically. So anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Again, my name is Austin and Anson, and this is the Welding 101 uh, stick welding course, I guess you could say. Um, I've got tons of other videos about welding. They're going to probably start popping up here any second. If you want to check out some of those, I greatly, greatly appreciate all the support on the channel. Not all of them are about welding. Some of them are about other stuff, um, welding trucks, all that, and it's... It's all based upon getting started for yourself in a welding career for minimal cost. Um, so yeah, if you like this video guys, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.